Hi, and welcome back to Build Your Own Data Logger, Module 2, Submodule 5. Setting up the Arduino IDE. Hello, world! In this module, we're going to be using the built in serial class in Arduino and learning why the wild logger uses the USB serial dongle to communicate with the PC. Why can't it just communicate directly? Well, a long time ago, PCs had two different ways to communicate. One way was sending data serially, meaning in a series or sequentially. That means one bit followed another, and you had to wait for all 8 bits to come in before you could assemble them into a byte and decode it. Old school modems and mice worked this way. The other method of communications was parallel, where you had 8 separate lines and you sent all 8 bits down each line simultaneously. Old school printers worked this way. Unfortunately, parallel communications took up a lot of pins, and as you increased the speed, it became much harder to work with. Serial communications, where you sent the data down a single line, was much simpler, meaning it was easier to scale, used only a single pin to transmit data, meaning you could have cheaper ICs, and as speeds increased, data could be sent in the megabits and gigabit speeds. The reason I'm mentioning this is that in the Arduino platform, we'll be using various serial communication methods. The one we'll be looking at in this submodule deals with the PC communicating with the microcontroller. There's also a serial communication method called I2C, which is how we communicate with LCDs, as well as some sensors and peripherals. And yet another serial method called SPI, or Serial Peripheral Interface, which is often used by the microcontroller to communicate with wireless radios, high-speed sensors, and many other peripherals. As you start looking into interfacing other devices to either a wild logger or the future devices you create, it'll be useful to understand the different serial communication methods. This brings us to communications with our board. The MCU on the wild logger supports a serial communication style where one line is dedicated to transmitting serial data and another line is dedicated to receiving it. For those of you that may remember when PCs used serial ports, the communication was something like this. You'd connect a serial cable to some serial device, like a modem, and then you could communicate with it. Because PCs rarely have serial ports anymore, and laptops wouldn't be caught dead with one, if we want to communicate with a PC these days, we do it via USB. So although the microcontroller on the wild logger has a standard serial port with a transmit and receive pin, it needs to go through an intermediary, which is the USB serial bridge. In our case, it's the USB serial dongle with the CH340 chip. This allows us to communicate via USB with the PC. This next program will be extremely important and a foundation for probably all of the future programs you'll be writing. It's an introduction to the serial port and serial console, a very useful tool for development. In this program, we're going to write the classic Hello World. Hello World is a program that simply writes Hello World to the serial console. Although it might seem like a trivial application, it's a common first program that many developers write and is a sanity check that the software and hardware are communicating properly. It demonstrates how to initialize the serial port and send text data to a PC. We'll be writing to the serial console a lot as we code our application and test it. So knowing how to write to the serial console is a key part of hardware development in Arduino. This can form the basis for a PC GUI to communicate with the device you're creating or a way to automatically pull data off a device like the WADLogger. I use it all the time for development in order to tell me the state of my system. For the Hello World program, we're going to be using a built-in class in Arduino called the Serial class. This class allows you to use the serial port on the WADLogger to communicate with the PC host. The first and required function you'll need to call is serial.begin and provide the baud rate. This initializes the serial port on the microcontroller at the specified baud rate. The baud rate is the speed that you'll be sending data at and needs to match the speed on the PC console. Baud rates are a holdover from decades ago and have strange speeds like 9600 BPS, 19200, 57600, and 115200 BPS. Along with serial.begin, the next functions we'll be using are serial.print and serial.println with a text string as an argument. Actually, I call serial.println serial.println. The difference between them is that serial.println adds a carriage return or new line at the end of the string automatically. We'll see cases where we use both in this next lab exercise. Let's get started. This is a preview of the code we'll be writing. You can see we have our setup and loop functions. In the setup function, we start out with serial.begin and a baud rate of 57600 bits per second. This initializes the serial port on the MCU and prepares it so it can send and receive data. Then we do a serial.print with the title string hello sketch and a version. This transmits that string serially to the PC. Since we use the serial.print function instead of the serial.print line function, there is no new line and carriage return. We stay on the same line. Then we do a serial.print line with the version number. 
Because it's a serial.print line, it will be followed with a new line and carriage return. The reason I separated out the print statements is first to demonstrate the difference between serial.print and serial.print line, but also because we could have the version come from a variable or some other automated way to version code. Since this is all in the setup function, it will display once, and we often refer to it as title text or text header. It's extremely useful, and we recommend you always have one in your program. Otherwise, when you turn on your board, you won't know what code or what version of code you're running. This is also really useful when you're in the field and doing program updates. Next, we go to the loop function. In the loop function, we again do a serial.print line printing out the text string, hello world. Since it's serial.print line, again, we get a new line and carriage return. We then delay for one second and then return to the start of the loop function. We do this infinitely, printing out hello world every one second. Now let's go through the whole process in the Arduino IDE. The Hello World program will actually be quite simple. In the setup function, we'll initialize the serial port using serial.begin with the baud rate of 57600 BPS. We'll also print out the title text shown above. I've split the title text into a print statement and print line statement to demonstrate how and when you'd use them. In the loop function, we'll also print out Hello World with a delay of one second. You should see that you get one printout of the title text, and then after that, you should just get Hello World. Once you've entered in the program, then download it into the board. After download, you can open the serial console by clicking on the icon in the far upper right corner. Make sure the settings are correct also. It should have a baud rate of 57600 BPS and carriage return line endings. Once that's done, you should start seeing the printouts. In this module, we learned about serial communications with the PC, how to initialize the serial library, and also how to send data to the PC using the serial.print and serial.print line functions. This concludes module two, where we went through the complete setup of the Arduino IDE and we're able to start writing programs on it. In Module 3, we'll be going even deeper. Stay tuned for Programming the Wild Logger. And congratulations for making it through Module 2.